Hey guys, Warmind Minis here. Thank you for checking out this video. Today I'm going to be giving you a tutorial on the Canoptic Reanimator. We're going to go ahead and start with Vallejo Mecha Black Primer. And we're actually going to do this through an airbrush because it is super hot here in Virginia and I don't want to be outside. So we're going to go ahead and give the model a nice even coat through the airbrush. Now I do like this primer because it gives kind of a, almost a semi-gloss touch to it and this is going to be perfect for doing our metallics a little bit later on. It's going to really help make those shine and stand out from the rest of the model. So I'm going to go ahead and give this a nice solid base coat here. Make sure you want to get all the nooks and crannies and once that's done we'll cut and we'll show up here. So here we've got the model completely primed. And we're going to go ahead and start by applying a dry brush of scale color black metal. And we're going to go ahead and use a makeup brush for this. This is one of the best brushes that you can use for dry brushing techniques because it's going to give you great coverage and it's not going to put on too much of your paint. So we're going to go ahead and put a little on the palette here and get our paper towel. Take the brush and we're just going to dab it into the paint take some paint off of there and we're gonna go ahead and start applying this all over the model and you can see that I'm kind of working in a bunch of different random patterns because when you look at Necrons you don't see normal metal so we're gonna go ahead and finish this up and show up when it's done Alright, so now that that's finished, we're going to go ahead and move on to the next part of the model. And here, we're going to go ahead and take Gnome Oil Gloss. Now, this is a great wash to use for this because that glossy finish, like I mentioned before, is going to really help out with making your metallics look like actual metal. And we're going to go ahead and take this and we're going to work this into just about every crevice that we can. We want to really really make sure that that shade is is getting into those those nooks there now you're going to want to let this sit and dry for a good couple of hours you don't want to paint over wet no oil gloss and once that's done then we're going to go ahead and move on to the next step so moving on here we're going to go with scale color heavy metal. This is a bit of a lighter metal, and this is gonna help bring out the raised portions on the model while keeping that darker uh, base metal that we used earlier, and uh, really allowing the details on this model to shine, and there are a lot of details here to look at. So once again, we're gonna take a, the makeup brush, and we're going to put some paint on our palette, get it on the brush, wipe it off on a paper towel, and this time instead of working all around the model, what we're going to do is we're going to kind of just go very lightly on a lot of the raised edges there, and this is going to act as a highlight for our metal. You don't want to put too much on here because you really want those dark spots to shine. Just want to put this on everything that you put that dark metal on. All right, we'll go ahead and we'll finish this up and we'll come back when it's done. All right, so moving on from that, we're going to take our P3 Molten Bronze. This is a very pretty bronze and it's very, very metallic. So typically you want to put down about two coats of this. Make sure you give it a good shake as well. And what we're going to do is we're going to apply this to all of the ball joints on the model. And we are going to apply it to the connections for all the little pipes. So I'll go ahead and put this down and remember two thin coats of this as, as uh, the Warhammer people always say. And 
and you're just going to put this on every single one of those joints and connection pieces. Alright, moving on, we're going to try the new, and new as in 2020, Canoptic Alloy. I've actually been really enjoying this, but we're going to go ahead and pop that open. And we are going to apply this to the chassis of the frame. And you'll see here, I'm going to go ahead and move these chains out of the way. If, I, if you do want to copy me and put chains on your model, definitely do it after you're done painting. It makes things a lot easier. So we're going to go ahead and paint here. Now, the reason I'm using a fine detail brush is because there are a lot of cracks and a lot of uh, damage that's on this part of the model. And I don't want to paint over that with the canoptic alloy. I want to leave our metal there that we put down earlier. So I'm just going to very, very carefully go around those places, leaving that silver and black below while putting down the canoptic alloy up top. So I'll go ahead and finish this up here, and I'll come back to you when it's done. All right, now that that's finished, we're going to move on to the next step, which is applying another layer of Norm Oil Gloss. But this time, the only places that we're actually going to be putting this is going to be the brass joints that we put down earlier because those have a lot of nice little details that you want to bring out using that gloss and we're going to put it over our canoptic alloy But we're going to go ahead and work this wash in just like we did with every, or just like we did with the wash before. I apologize. All right. Now that that's completed, we're going to go ahead and move on to our next step. And this is going to be applying P3's Troll Blood base. This is one of my favorite bases to use, and I use this for all of my Necrons in order to kind of get that icy blue that I thoroughly enjoy so much. Now you do want to thin this down a little bit um, before you start applying it. Uh, this is a very thick paint, so you want to make sure that you're putting this on in smooth, even layers. And again, you want to do about two coats of this. But we're going to go ahead and apply this to all of the pipes that are on the legs uh, or connecting the claws. We're also going to apply this to the gem in the center of the chassis, the eye, the orbs up top, and the carapace armor itself. And this is going to lay down the foundation for what we want later on. Now once again up here on the carapace armor, I am being very careful not to paint over the cracks and dents in the armor, at least the big ones, and we are going to leave those again silver and black to help really show that detail and to make it look like it's really taken some damage. So do be careful when applying that, but if you do go over any of the cracks like I just did there, don't worry about it, we're going to fix that in a later step. Alright, now that all of our Troll Blood base is on the model, we're going to go ahead and move forward to the next step. And this is where we're going to take Baharoth Blue, arguably one of my favorite colors in the Citadel line, and we're going to go ahead and pop that open. We're going to take a medium dry brush for this because you do want some control while you're doing this. Don't forget to clear off some of your paint on your paper towel. And where we're going to go from here is we're going to take that Baharoth blue and we're going to put it on all of the areas that we put down our troll blood base, 
but we're going to be focusing a little bit more. You want to put it more towards the center of the pipes while leaving the troll blood base on the outside. So cutting forward just a little bit here, we're going to take Teclas Blue, and this is going to be to finish up the eye and the, uh, I guess, power core or gems, whatever you want to call them in the center of the chassis. We're going to take just a tiny bit of Teclas Blue. I'm going to look at the eye here. And all we're going to do is we are going to paint a little crescent moon shape. You want to leave the troll blood base that you put down in the top corner of it. It can be right or left, you know, just depending on your preferences there. But you're just going to put down one thin layer of that. Take a look, make sure you've got all of your coverage down. And then we're going to take the Teclas Blue again. And we are going to just paint a broad area on that inside power core. You again want to leave your Troll Blood base just more towards the edges of it because as you work your way in it's going to be brighter as you go. Let me take a closer look at that to kind of show you what I'm talking about. I know it's a little dark in there. We'll shine some light on it for you. All right, and once both sides are done, we're going to go back to our Baharoth Blue. Get some paint on your brush. And now we're going to do kind of the same thing, except just a little bit smaller. Again, taking our fine detail brush. We're going to paint that crescent moon on the eye, but focusing more on that outer layer this time. Now you do want to build up a nice uh, coat of this, because that color, that Baharoth blue, you really want that to come through on the eye to show that contrast between the light and the dark sides of it. And again, we're going to go for that center power core there. And we're just going to paint a little bit more towards that center of that orb with the Baharoth blue. All right, so once that's done, we are going to go ahead and take our Citadel Air White Scar. This is a very, very good white paint to use. Uh, I know white is the bane of most painters existence, but this is very thin and it's perfect for doing little details like this, where we put a little glint in the eye there. Now that's gonna help give it that kind of gem looking effect. Then we're gonna take a little bit of that Air White, not too, too much. And we're going to focus right in the center of that power core. Now after we're done with that, we're going to take our Vallejo model color cold white. And we're going to wind up dry brushing all of the parts that we have been building up for that kind of glowing icy effect uh, we're going to focus on the tubes and when you dry brush these you want to go ahead and really put your attention into the center of the tubes with just a little bit of that white spreading out from the sides now this is going to help give it that that source lighting effect and it's going to help set up for what we want to do coming up here we're also going to dry brush white on the carapace but after we dry brush white there we're really not going to touch it anymore at least for a little while but you can see here i'm focusing on the center of the tubes and that gives it that nice glowing effect finish this up and we'll come back when it's done. Alright, 
now that we have completed that step of the process, we are getting very close to having a completed model here. So we're gonna take our P3 turquoise ink, and this is what's going to finally solidify that glowing effect that we've been building up this whole time. Put a couple dots on your palette, and you're gonna to wanna to take a decent brush here, one that's gonna give you a good amount of control because this ink is very watery, and you want to control how much of it that you're putting on these parts. So you can see here, I take a little bit and I make sure I don't have too much on my brush. Now we're only gonna wanna put this on areas that we want to have that vibrant glow. So this is going to be the pipes, the orbs, but we're really not gonna put this on the eye or that center power core, unless you want to. It's your model, you paint it how you'd like. So we'll go ahead and make sure that we have good coverage on all of this. Only one layer should do it. And once we're done, we will come back. All right, now that we've completed our turquoise ink, we're gonna go ahead and move on to our next step, which is gonna be our Ulthuin Gray. I always mispronounce that. This is how I do all of the white on my models because like I mentioned before, painting with white is a nightmare to do. But with Ulthuin Gray, it makes it a little bit easier. We're gonna go ahead and take some and we are going to thin this down just a little bit. We don't want this too watery. We want it to be about the consistency of milk. And all we're going to do here is we're going to take it to the carapace, again being mindful of our little scrapes and dents, and we're just going to very, very carefully apply it along the edge of the model here. And what we're doing with this effect is we are just creating some armor separation where there isn't any. I thought that this would be a nice way to break up the teal and troll blood base that we have going on up there. Uh, if you don't want to do this, I mean, again, it's your model, you paint it how you'd like. I would love to see some of your work, so definitely if you have an Instagram or if you have uh, photos that you want to upload of your models, please do so down in the comments below. So we'll go ahead and finish this up and we'll be back when it's done. Now this is done on both sides of the model. So now we're gonna go back to our black metal for scale color. And this is the step I had mentioned earlier where we're gonna go ahead and clean up some of our pot marks that we may have painted over during our dry brushing process or even our painting process. So we're gonna put a little bit on our palette here. And we're gonna take a fine detail brush because we want control when we're doing this. And we are going to go ahead and start applying this very, very carefully over top of the dings and dents that this model has. Now don't worry too much about losing detail here because we are gonna bring that back up with a wash. However, you wanna make sure that your paint doesn't pull in this area. So don't put too much on your brush when doing this. So we'll finish this up and we'll come back when it's done. All right, moving onward here. We are still fixing some of these dings and dents, but this time, and I forgot to show it, I do apologize, we are using our known oil gloss again, and we're just putting a very, very thin layer over top of the areas that we fixed. And this is gonna help shade those and really bring those details to life on, on the carapace. I do like how they've done this. I know a lot of people aren't a fan of the battle damage, but I think it adds a lot of character to the model. All right, now that that's done, we're gonna go ahead and move on with our next step. And here we're gonna take our art coat and this is just going to be applied in two places, one on the eye and one on the power core. And this is gonna give it that shine, uh, give it that gem look, that kind of powery vibe, I guess, whatever you wanna call it. 
and it's going to just help make those parts stand out a little bit more on the model. We'll finish this up and we'll come back when it's done. Alright, so now we're going to take our Baharoth blue again. And what we're going to do is just very, very lightly, we're going to go over these glyphs that are on the carapace. And this is going to help make them stand out and separate from everything else. It's going to kind of make them look like they're glowing, not to the same extent that we did the tubes, but I think it adds for a nice touch. You can do this in bronze or gold or whatever color you deem fit for your army, but I definitely recommend picking out these glyphs. It really makes, makes the model pop a bit more on the tabletop. So we're going to do this on both sides. And boom. So now we're going to go ahead and focus on the base. We're done with the model itself, but we're going to take our Mephiston Red here, crack that open. We're going to take a dry brush, and we're going to go with the Castellan Robot Hand that's on the base here. Now I did do a little bit of modification here, and I had him stepping on top of a little fallen Necron Warrior there, and it looks like that Necron Warrior has been uh, fighting that Castellan Robot. But we're just going to dry brush the red over top of that, and we really only need to give this one coat to make it look, you know, battle-worn and damaged. We really don't need to focus too much on this. Alright, so once you feel comfortable with your coat of red there, again it doesn't have to be much, we're going to go ahead and move on to Celestia Gray. And this is what we're going to use for all of the little rock piles that are down there. Alright, now our, my camera did die unfortunately, but we did put down Astro Granite Debris, which is a texture paint from Citadel. Definitely makes for doing these snowy bases uh, a lot easier. So we're going to go back to our Vallejo Cold White, now that, our, uh, now that our base has dried. And we're going to take our dry brushing once again. Just make sure we don't have too much paint on there. We're going to pick out all the raised details down there on the base. And this is going to help make it look like it's kind of almost like a fresh dusting of snow. Now you can do all kinds of stuff down here. You can do crackle paint, you know, lava style, whatever fits your army. And once that's dry, we're going to go ahead and move on to Valhalla Blizzard which has been my go-to snow basing effect because I don't like dealing with flocking, it gets everywhere. But we're gonna go ahead and just take a little scoop full of this and we're just gonna start randomly applying it. And kind of work this into the basing too. You want some of that gray to come through and this kind of helps give it the illusion that that snow is settled on the ground and. Uh, it's, it's probably been there for a little while. So we're going to work this all around the base here. And we will come back when that's done. Alright, now that we've got our snow put down, we want to go ahead and take our Ard Coat and we're going to apply this kind of randomly around the base. And this is going to give it this kind of look that ice has built up. It's a very thin layer of ice, but it looks cold and sleek and that's really what you want to go for when you're doing an icy theme. I find Ard Coat makes for very good ice effects, um, especially over... Uh, darker things because when it dries it leaves that glossy effect and that's really what you want to look for uh, You can use any type of high gloss paint here, but uh, I find that art coat works the best for my personal needs 
And then to finish the model off here, we're going to take some Abaddon Black, or Abaddon Black, however you choose to say it. And we're just going to clean up the base down here where we have put down that Astro Granite Debris. As you can see, some of the gray got over onto the edge of the base, and we want our models to look uniform. Now you can do this with any color that you've chosen for your bases. Uh, you can match it to the color or change it entirely. I just like black. It's nice, simple, sleek, and it works for the theme of my army. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how to paint the Canoptic Reanimator from Warhammer 40,000. I look forward to making these, but definitely check out some of my other time-lapse videos that I've done. Um, I'm having a ton of fun making this stuff. I really hope that you guys are enjoying them. Please do like and subscribe if you do. Be sure to hit the bell notification for icons. Wow, I said that all kinds of wrong. Be sure to hit the bell for notifications. There we go. Got it right. Now, you guys have a good rest of the day, and I look forward to seeing you next time.